Hey, this is Brian Lau. I'm an acupuncture physician. I'm also an educator in the world of acupuncture. I'm out here in hot, humid summer Florida to discuss a few things, which we'll get into in just a moment. But if you stick around to the end, I'll actually describe why I'm out here and give you the real reason. So first reason is a real reason too, but it's not the main reason. So stick around and you'll hear about that. So I'm out here at this trail and there's a ton of calisthenic equipment. So it gives me an opportunity to talk about movement from the perspective of Chinese medicine. So in Chinese medicine, we have channels that run throughout the body, out into the legs and out into the arms. Sometimes these are referred to as meridians. So those 12 channels are the main things that acupuncturists are working with. There's a few extra channels that they also work with. We're gonna talk about a portion of those channels which is referred to as the channel sinews or the Jing Jin. So the channel sinews are the muscles and the fascial component of the channels. So if I'm out here doing calisthenic equipment, these are the channels that I'm engaging that are controlling those movements. So we're gonna talk about an aspect of the channels that's referred to as the channel sinews or the Jing Jin. These are the muscle and fascial component of the channels. These are planes of tissue that run up throughout the body, very interconnected. These are something you can see with the eye if you were doing something like dissection or looking at anatomy text. Depends on how the author created that image, but these are very visible, very real, very obvious things. So out here at the calisthenic park, I'm gonna be using the channel sinews because these are the parts that create movement. They're also the part of the channels that helps balance the body and influences posture and structure. So we're gonna talk about some key calisthenic exercises, not so much from learning the exercises, but from how these Chinese medical channels control and influence certain movement patterns. We're gonna look at specifically rotation and side bending today. These are controlled, these are generated from the gallbladder channel, the liver channel, the pericardium channel, and the San Zhao or the triple burner channel. If you're not an acupuncturist, don't worry about it. We're not gonna go into depth about those, but I just wanna give you the idea that these are very interrelated channels. There's very obvious channel relationships that we talk about in Chinese medicine, and I'm gonna talk about it from the perspective of movement, again, side bending and rotation. So let's check it out. So the first piece of equipment that I usually come to on this trail is this really interesting contraption that I wish I saw at more calisthenic parks because it's really functional. There's a ton of stuff you can do with it. Specifically, I'm gonna look at a human flag and I'm gonna look at the side kicks. So these are both side bending type movements. They also incorporate a certain amount of rotation. So let's check those out. The next bit of equipment I'm gonna to come to are monkey bars. You'll see them as I get around the bend here. These would also have aspects of training side bending, which we can look at, but much more rotation. Personally, when I'm training side bending movements, again, those four channel pairings, I kind of stay with ones that are more side bending oriented. And when I'm doing rotation exercises, I tend to stay with rotational exercises. Sometimes I combine them. They use the same channels. There's a lot of interrelationship between side bending and rotation. So this is monkey bars. I may or may not combine it with the previous exercise, usually not. This is a piece of equipment I use after the first exercise because again, I can work on sidekicks, I can work on a human flag progression, I can work on stretching the um, side of the body. So very functional and simple. These are always at calisthenic parks or at least they're a component of one because they're gonna be parts of other equipment, including the equipment we just looked at. So let's check out some exercises with this. I would again do this after the first exercise because it's still side bending, it's still influencing that, those same channel pairings but in a very organized way so I can learn something from that.
And around the bend is the next piece of equipment. This is another very functional piece of equipment and it's, at, and it's frequently at calisthenic parks. Let's look at another exercise with this. So I'm walking to the next bit of equipment. I could just walk, oftentimes I do, but since I've worked on these channels which influence stability and movement along the sides, I can kind of pay attention to the hip swaying back and forth. I can increase that sway, I can decrease it. I can educate those channels because they've been woken up from the previous exercises I've done. Make sure you leave a comment if you have any questions or even if you have any uh, thoughts on this. It's a great subject to talk about and we can carry on the discussion in that comment section. So we're approaching the last bit of calisthenic equipment, at least in respect to side bending type activities. So this is another common piece of equipment. You see it many calisthenic trails and parks. Also you see it at some gyms, so really great exercises you can do on this. Again, we'll look at side bending and exercises. All right, so I'm out along a field now. It's a chance to do some Tai Chi practice. In Tai Chi, we don't have a whole lot of movements that have side bending. We do have a lot of rotation movements, but not a lot of straight side bending movements. What we do have is a lot of opportunity to stabilize against side bending. So for instance, if my weight's on one leg, I need to stabilize my pelvic structure so it doesn't rock up on that one leg, so my hip doesn't hike up. I need to stabilize the rib cage so it's not bending one way excessively. So I'm going to practice an exercise that uses a lot of flexion and extension, but I'm working and thinking about that side bending as I'm doing it. I've educated the channels with the exercises I was doing on the calisthenic equipment, and now I'm helping to integrate that stabilization role when I do Tai Chi. If you go back and look at those exercises, you'll notice that the side bending ones, I start in a stretched position along the side, but I bring myself back to neutral. I'm really working on stabilization. That's how these channels function. That's what they do primarily. Yes, we do side bending type movements, but it's more about stabilization. All right, so I had a great workout this afternoon. Thanks for joining me. Hope you learned something from this. I mentioned in the beginning how I would discuss why I'm really out here. It was nice to be able to talk about the channels, talk about some concepts, but I got a new camera and I wanted to try out the lighting. I wanted to try out the sound. Just wanted to see how it works. This gave me a really good reason to come out here. So hopefully you enjoyed this exploration of the channel sinews.